So in this tutorial, I'd like to uh, connect uh, the impedance method uh, which we learned in 6W2X with uh, the Fourier transform. Okay, so just to uh, recall uh, what we did in uh, 6W2X, uh, we had uh, this RC circuit. I'm going to use the same RC circuit which I used in the practical convolution uh, tutorial. Okay, and I have a capacitor. I have a voltage source this is plus this is minus okay and this was my ground node okay so we had this simple circuit this is r this is c and this is small uh, vi right we had this input voltage and we had to find out uh, vo okay so what we did in in 6w2x was we uh, we used uh, the impedance method so we replaced uh, the capacitor with uh, an impedance with value 1 by cs r remained the same and we used complex amplitudes and what we did is we used the voltage divider formula so capital vo would be equal to uh, would be equal to this is not there we just erase that okay so um, that would be equal to um, where was i okay so that according to according to the um, voltage divider formula that would be 1 by cs uh, times vi uh, capital vi okay divided by r plus 1 by cs right and if we simplified this we would get vo equals uh, vi upon 1 plus r cs okay and if i took vo by vi this would be equal to 1 upon 1 plus RCS and I'm not sure but I think we uh, we were taught that this is called the transfer function okay okay this is called the transfer function okay in case you didn't know transfer function okay so this is the transfer function uh, I didn't write it very clearly so this is called the transfer function and it is denoted by H of s okay or H of uh, Omega okay so you you also know that cs could be replaced by j omega okay and this is what we learned and uh, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to uh, connect this with the fourier transform this is actually uh, the transfer function is actually the fourier transform so that's what we'll see in the end of this video okay so let me just delete this okay and delete this okay now now this is the Fourier transform. I said that H of omega is the Fourier transform. So let me just let me just uh, write that result. We'll record that result and we will compare it in the end. So we just saw that H of s, capital H of s, is equal to capital H of omega, and that's equal to one over R plus. Sorry, that's equal to one plus R C J omega. I should have said J R C omega. Anyway. Uh, I guess you understand that. Okay. Uh, if you remember uh, in uh, my tutorial on practical convolution, we found that the impulse response of this system, of this RC system, was H of t. Okay. And uh, this is equal to, we found that this was equal to 1 over RC. Okay. Times e to the minus t over RC times u of t. Okay. This u of t is very important because uh, I, I missed that out in my in in the video but uh, I mentioned this in the discussion forums that this u of t is important because our uh, function I mean our, our system starts only from t equal to 0 it is it's 0 over here so this u of t is very important okay and this was my impulse uh, response now what I'll do is I will find h of omega but this time I will do this by finding the Fourier transform of this so what's the Fourier transform so we know that the Fourier transform Ft is equal to integral from minus infinity okay, to infinity uh, h of t times e to the um, what is it e to the minus j om omega t dt right okay and uh, this minus infinity will become zero because we have a u of t here okay and what I'll get is 1 over RC integral 0 to infinity okay e to the minus T over RC uh, times 
um, e to the minus uh, j omega t right and this is a dt okay and this is equal to 1 over rc times integral 0 to infinity okay and I should get e raised to minus t times 1 over rc plus j uh, omega okay dt okay and if I integrate this I will get uh, 1 over rc times uh, 1 upon this term this exponent so 1 by rc plus j omega times uh, let's see e raised to minus t times 1 over rc plus j omega okay and i'll have to replace 0 and infinity okay so if i take the lcm this rc term will go to the numerator okay and that uh, term and this rc would cancel out so i will just have 1 upon uh, i will just have 1 upon 1 plus uh, j omega rc okay and this would be multiplied by so if i if i substitute infinity over here i would get a zero okay oh i also forgot this should have been a minus okay sorry sorry about this should have been a minus because it's a minus t or rc so this is a minus so if i substitute infinity i will get the zero over here and if i substitute zero i would get a minus one over here okay so this minus one and this minus one would cancel so if i just uh, if i just do that quickly um if i just erase that out that minus one would go and this minus sign would go as well so my final answer would be this right and uh, if we compare that to our original uh, transfer function if we compare that to we ha what we had originally you can see that both are the same so the Fourier transform of the impulse response okay is actually the transfer function of of our uh, of our uh, of our circuit okay and uh, here is where uh, this is so so you can see that the impedance method was actually derived from uh, from finding the Fourier Fourier transform so how was it derived from uh, the Fourier transform so let's just do that um, to uh, to get the uh, to to get the response uh, if you remember from the usual differential equation approach as well as the sneaky approach uh, we tried to uh, solve a differential equation we tried to solve uh, the differential equation of the circuit so uh, the important thing is here uh, just now what I told you is I sent in uh, an impulse response uh, an impulse input and I found uh, and I found uh, the impulse response I found uh, h of t okay so I I gave in the input impulse and I found uh, the impulse response okay uh, that is h of t but what I want to do is now find uh, the sinusoidal response so to do that what I actually did is I took the Fourier transform okay and I found h of omega okay um, so what does this mean I get h of omega if my input to this is a sign okay is a sign I will get h of omega and uh, to find this h of omega what we did is we found the differential equation so let me just do that so I get uh, by the node method this is c d v d t this is c d v d t and this is just uh, v output so this is my v output minus v input divided by this r over here okay so let's so let's just use node node method so you get uh, c d v d t okay plus um, v output minus v input okay divided by r okay so this is r equals 0 right so this was my differential equation right so now again i'll divide this entire equation by c so i get dv by dt plus 1 over rc times small v o minus small v i equals 0 and this was my differential equation and uh, we tried various methods so my vi was actually a sine omega t that's what uh, that's what sinusoidal uh, input means i'm just going to leave it for vi 
because you will soon see that the Fourier transform will actually worry only about the sinusoidal uh, response. So anyway, so what I did was, uh, uh, what we did in 6W2X was we replaced this by sin omega t. Uh, we tried using uh, uh, the guess and check method and it didn't work. Uh, then we use some sneaky approach okay and we found out uh, the the output but it was really complicated and so we just jumped into uh, into the impedance method by comparing the uh, comparing the result of the sneaky approach what i'm going to do is actually derive the uh, derive the um, uh, derive the expression using fourier transforms and you'll just see how how the how how the values of you know 1 by cs and you know ls and so on actually come from the fourier transform so i'm going to just uh, find the fourier transform of this i'm just going to uh, apply the fourier transform on both sides of the equation so if you remember from lecture 9 okay properties of the fourier transform we know that the fourier transform of the derivative okay so if i have x of t okay the fourier transform of dx of t dt okay the fourier transform of this is j omega times j omega times x of omega okay where x of capital x of omega is the fourier transform of uh, of uh, x of t okay i'm going to just use this result so you get j omega times uh, v okay i'm just going to use capital v i'm not going to say v of omega that's understood plus 1 over rc times capital v o this is this is v o by the way okay this is all v o okay capital v o minus capital v i equals zero okay and uh, let's let's take the v i term to the right hand side and and collect the v o term so i get v o times one over r c plus j omega okay equals v i over r c right and if i take the common denominator here i will get v o times uh, 1 plus j omega r c i'm sure you can see the result coming out now okay equals um, v i over r c and i'll just cancel these two out i will take this to the right hand side and this v i over here so i will get v o by v i equals 1 over 1 plus j omega r c okay and you can see we got the same expression so if i if i exp if i you know simp if i uh, do some math i will get 1 over uh, c j omega over here and i will get 1 by no, c j omega plus r okay and uh, and you can now see if i take this if i remove this vi and i put this vi over here this is like you know a voltage divider a relationship so you can see that you have uh, a voltage divided relationship relationship so that's like having a resist having one resistance or rather impedance here and you have another impedance here okay this is my complex input vi my complex output over here vo okay and this is like having a series resistance r or rather impedance r and another series impedance 1 by j omega okay so you can see we actually got uh, the impedance method by taking the fourier transform of the differential equation okay and uh, that's the connection between fourier transforms and the impedance method of 6w2x um, this connection is a little incomplete because um, this s actually doesn't only stand for j omega it stands for something else which we'll uh, come back to at the end of the course because um, if you remember we have some conditions on finding the fourier series and the fourier transforms okay so one of the conditions is that uh, the input i mean the, the function should be absolutely integrable there are cases where you know um, practical functions which we see in real life cannot be integrated uh, you can uh, the integral uh, the integral doesn't converge so we do something else we we have another op operation for that and uh, that well, once we once we come come to that we will wrap up our uh, connection between signals and uh, and 6w2x so that's it for now